Hey there, I'm Dylan Paris. I make a lot of videos mostly about music and music equipment using iPads and the Teenage Engineering OPZ. I also do some animation and some film. I uh, studied film for five years. I work in the tech industry at the moment, but I also love to do creative stuff. And right now, my number one device for creativity is the iPad Pro 11 inch running iPad OS 13 as of July 2019. So I wanted to show you a couple different ways that I use this device. This is my newest configuration. This is desktop mode. So here, I've got a wireless mouse I got on Amazon from TechNet for like 13 bucks. I've got this Logitech Bluetooth keyboard. I've got this Bluetooth speaker. And the reason for that is that I'm running video out over DisplayPort and that hijacks the audio to this Dell monitor, but the monitor doesn't have speakers. So I run the audio out of this. With great graphics cards. Nintendo just launched the Switch Lite, but in other news, the company also just submitted an So I don't actually use this desktop config all that much, but I think it shows us an image of what this machine can be like in the future. So I want to point out what I like and what I don't like. What I like is this mouse interface. For one, you can map buttons. So here, I've got middle button taking me home. Double click brings up the dock. Go back into where I was. Pull up my dock this way. Hover over and bring a pop-up window of Reddit here. Our Nintendo Switch, which I frequent. One of the things I like about this interface is the ability to swap out, swap in. What I don't know how to do, and maybe someone in the comments can tell me this, what I'd really like is the ability to quickly slide in and slide out these pop-over windows, which I don't know how to do. I remember, I feel like it was iOS 10 or 11. The ability to manage things in the side was a lot easier. I feel like they've made it a little more complicated. The other thing I would actually like is the ability to just have a row of these that actually correspond to this line here so I'm not cutting off my video and not even worry about the app behind it. Because once I have an app behind here, I'm not really using it anymore. I'm just using it to fill a space behind these little pop-out windows. And what I would like is just a rotating carousel of these pop-out windows so that I can do the work I want to do. I'm still figuring out this uh, mouse situation here. But, um, you know, overall, I really do like this configuration. I just think it would be cool if uh, this panel was separate and there was a hard dividing line and I was just going through these or, and maybe this is true, I'm not sure, if there was a quick action to suddenly get rid of those but keep the window I'm on. Right now, I can do that, but it brings them back. If I go all the way home, pop this back up, they're gone. But something smoother would be nice. So, this is the desktop config. Right now I've got mouse and keyboard support. So type here for random stuff. Totally works. Um, we can do my go-to testing search, which is a Google search for dogs. As you can see, dogs fully functional. And as you can see, you know, mouse support is here with the accessibility options. If you go into settings, into accessibility, touch, assistive touch, pointing devices, there you go, connected devices. And this is actually where I figured out how to connect the mouse. It, I wasn't seeing it in the normal Bluetooth menu. So take that for what it is. Um, but once it's there, it's pretty cool. And I've been enjoying it so far. Everything works kind of how you would hope. Uh, scrolling, I suppose, is actually here, but it seems pretty janky, whereas this is pretty smooth. I figured out tap, double, like essentially tap to scroll, tap again to stop, has been pretty smooth. So that's my method here. Um, normal gesture-based stuff mostly works, but in this window mode particularly, I've had some difficulty just because it's so close to that line. So this is desktop mode, and I'm a fan of it. I think there's a lot of room for improvement here though. And the biggest thing I want to see is external display support in its truest form. Now Mac OS, you have a couple of options, duplicate display or extend display. And when doing those things, you usually see the entire screen fill to meet the aspect ratio of the device it's plugged into. That is not something the iPad is doing yet. 
but is absolutely something it should do. And we know for a fact that there are moments where it can. For example, in Luma Fusion, or Luma Fusion by Luma Touch, if you go here, you can see this animation I was working on. If I click this button, it hijacks this window, right? And now I'm just seeing this display. And on my device here, I can see my timeline and scroll around and move it. But over here, we're filling the entire 16 by 9 aspect ratio of the monitor. So external monitor scaling and support is clearly built into the OS. But the second I'm out of that app and I'm out of that supported use case, I'm back in my black bars, 4.3. Actually, it's probably not 4.3 on this guy, but not 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Ideally, in my opinion, given the power especially of the 2018 Pros and any Pro that comes after it, I would like to see a completely separate window of potentially interactive apps. So in that way, you would have a full app here or maybe even two apps here and then two apps here potentially as well. Or even a fancier version of your carousel pop-out apps could be happening here where two full split screen apps could happen here. The power is there. With mouse support, with a keyboard, the ability to actually pull this off is there. I know Apple is hesitant to make this machine a mouse and keyboard machine, but I think they're being limited in their thinking when it comes to this because this is just a way to use this device and to harness its power. Let's check out how I use this most of the time. So I'll do it in real time. First, disconnect Bluetooth. Second, disconnect monitor. Go into settings here. And this is new, I actually don't use the accessibility options a lot. Um, although it's really cool they're there for a multitude of reasons. And the last thing we're gonna do is disconnect from the keyboard, just so it doesn't give me any funkiness later. This machine has radically transformed how I do most of my computing tasks. And when I accomplish those tasks, I'm using it mostly in this form. So I don't have an Apple keyboard case or a Logitech keyboard case. In fact, I don't really use an external keyboard with this unless I'm in that desktop mode I showed, which is a pretty new mode. What I do use is this case I got on Amazon for 20 bucks. I'll put a link in it below. It's essentially a rip off of the smart folio, but instead of being like $80, it's 20 bucks. Magnetically attaches to the device, same way the other folio does. And it has two shapes using the same triangle method. You can put it flat on a surface like this or flat on a surface like this, close, protect the screen. So this is the config I use all the time. And with iPad OS 13, I've found this device has become exponentially more useful for a couple of different reasons. Let's pop up a web browser, go back where we were. Here we can see the YouTube frame I was in. If I go to edit text or enter text now, I should see, uh, let's see, yep, here we go. My little floating keyboard. This guy changes everything. Now before, when you were using a keyboard, it took up this much space, meaning that anytime you were entering text, your usable image here was half of the screen. And the way these apps are designed, this is terrible. This isn't something I want to do most of the time. Now you pinch in and you've got a floating static little keyboard or dynamic really that lets you use swipe to enter text, enter in normally, enter an emoji, and whatever else you want to do as well as voice stuff. I don't really do a lot of voice text, but it's good to have. So this creates an opportunity to have a workflow with multiple apps and windows that actually makes sense. So let's check out what Corridor Crew is doing here. Mute it. So you could be watching this rad video from the crew where they're going over these VFX. You could go to polygon.com or your website of choice and browse through here. You could be like, actually, I want to go somewhere else. And now you're really not interrupting the flow here. You can put this into full screen, take this over here. Now you are blocking, but now you aren't. And essentially here at this point, you've got a phone app and a full video you're watching and nothing you do over here is gonna mess with that video or whatever else you have going on. It looks pretty low res, I don't know if that's just the video, yeah. So we could go to AV Club, could go wherever. You could go back into the app, come here, decide you actually wanna go on Reddit. You could have it go here or you could pop it up like I was talking about earlier. Now again, I'd really like to see a way to easily hide these apps, but keep these apps. 
essentially hide these guys but keep these. I'm not sure how to do that. Please again in the comments, let me know if you know a way. Maybe I'm just missing it. But this workflow is really cool and I'm a fan of it. It lets you have everything going on here, everything here. If I wanna write a tweet like, I'm making a dumb video right now, or right not, as it were, I can make sure that they don't overwrite it, make it a dumb video right now, and tweet it. And all well, keeping my video playing with no audio, like most people do. So yeah, pretty sick workflow, love that. Now let's talk a little bit more about the main apps I use for creativity. Okay, so let's check out some of these apps. My primary music apps are here in Music Main. They're AUM, Beatmaker 3, Gadget 2, Cubasis, sometimes Groove Writer, and sometimes Touchable Pro, which allows me to connect to my desktop and use Ableton. But for the most part, I'm actually just using these, and lately I've mostly been using Cubasis. That's what I always go back to. Unless I'm plugging in external synths and hardware, and I just want to route the audio, then I use AUM. So tracking Cubasis, let's load it up using different audio units and different kinds of plugins and sounds to make a full song here. You can find the full video for this up on my YouTube channel. It's called I Hope Things Are Getting Better. I made the whole instrumental here and then I went into Ableton and I mixed and mastered it and then recorded my vocals because for right now the best vocal plugins in my opinion are still on PC and the best mixing and mastering stuff is all isotope in my opinion, and that's also all on PC right now. So that project was cool because I also created an animation and a video for it. And so that was here in LumaFusion. Here we go. So this project was originally called Balloon, and this is where I made the video for that song you just heard. So. I did all of the editing here on the iPad. I shot the video on my old iPhone, and then I did some color correction and some layering here. So if we go to edit, we can see some of the color work I did. If we go to, this is speed and reverse we're gonna want over here. I actually used a uh, LUT. I imported, I believe, the Filmic D-Log, or it might be built in, I can't remember. I applied the LUT and some color correction I created this animation in a different app I no longer use that I don't really like, but the way I got it to overlay is some really, really basic editing stuff where I just went in and I changed the size positioning, I cropped it in, and then for blending, I just lowered the opacity. And that created this effect of a floating animation over the screen. Now, in order to accomplish this work, I was using the Apple Pencil, and I keep my Apple Pencil and my iPad at most times in this case. So there's a sleeve in here for the pencil, and then when I need to, charge it up. It's still pretty charged, I've been using it pretty recently, because lately I've been actually using a new app that I found called Rough Animator. Rough Animator is a full animation studio with a lot of really cool options. Here's a project I've recently been working on. I'm not a master animator by any means. I'm using this to kind of teach myself, but I want to show you what you can do with this machine. So here is a simple loop, and I'll uh, expand it. This guy uh, is made in a couple of different layers. I'm animating at 12 frames per second, as I was pretty inspired by Spider-Verse and that kind of staticky look. Um, only this element is moving at 12s. This one is moving six frames a second. So the idea here is to draw your eye into the faster motion. But you can see up here, there's all kinds of layers. There's a lot of power in this machine. And there's apps like this that are finally taking advantage of that. So all of this um, was done here, either in Rough Animator or in conjunction here in Procreate, where I did the background based off of a Google image and kind of made that a painting and then exported really quickly as a PNG into files brought it back into Rough Animator. Here's another example of a Procreate file that I then took into Rough Animator. Let's close this project. I'll show you this other one. Both of these videos are going to be future music videos that I share and loop the music in the background with the audio. So 
This is another example of just some of the really cool creative work you can do here with an iPad Pro. What I've shown you is animation, video editing. Obviously, we've got photo editing as well, which a lot of other people have shown off. The music stuff's amazing. There's just so many plugins, so many sounds. This authentic Moog Model D, which Jakob Hack has actually done a video that shows how similar it is to an actual true Model D when doing a blind taste test. This little guy can plug directly into Cubasis or any of my other Audio Unit V3 compatible apps. From here in YT Studio, I can monitor the views on my channel. Super Bass Bros just hit over 500. That's super exciting. Oh yeah, and shout out to this dude right here, Aoui Jevois, or however you pronounce that, my apologies. They wanted a sample video. Um, Coco actually made a video on how to sample with the OPZ, which I'm still making my way through, and I highly recommend. This guy is the god of the OPZ if you're interested. All right, I highly recommend the iPad Pro 2018 11-inch model. My best recommendation, if you can swing it, is to build a desktop PC using used parts and new parts. I built mine for around $700, and it is extremely powerful for all the hard rendering and gaming and anything like that I want to do. For everything else, I use my iPad Pro, and that device I highly recommend. I would recommend looking in the aftermarket or looking at sales on Amazon. I bought it day one because I have a tech habit that I'm trying to get over, so I probably overpaid for this 256 gig machine without cellular. That being said, I don't regret it because it's the coolest device I own. And if I had to get rid of every other device, the last device I would keep, I believe, the one that I would hold on to is this iPad. Because at the end of the day, it can do everything I want to do and I can take it anywhere I want to go. I can augment it with those desktop parts I showed in the beginning of the video. I can do music and stuff. And there's one last thing I want to show you that I also think is pretty sweet. And that is gaming. All right, so one last thing I want to show is game streaming on the iPad Pro. And when I talk about game streaming, I'm not talking about Google Stadia. I'm talking about streaming from my own devices, my PC that's back there or my PS4 Pro. Let's check out the Pro. So with iPad OS, you can now sync a DualShock 4, which is sick as hell. So let's go into Bluetooth, hold share and home at the same time until you see this light start to blink like that. Click DualShock 4 wireless controller. It'll either be other or new, and then it's connected. So now we've got that connected. Let's do some remote put. And I've already got my settings configured, but just so you know, with the PS4 Pro, you can do 1080, high frame rates, and start. You can hear it actually turn on because it's in this room, which in my opinion, same network streaming is the way to go right now. I've seen much better performance that way than trying to do it from like my work internet on my lunch break, even though I still try because I'm a maniac and I want to see what the future can hold. But yeah, here we go. I am fully moving back and forth here. A game I like to show off is Wipeout Omega Collection, which is an amazing game. And actually I think a really cool example of a game that's designed to take advantage of as many different ways of playing as you want. It's totally PSVR compatible. It works with remote play, obviously. It works in 4K HDR, or at least 4K on the PS4 Pro. And it's an awesome reimagining and upgrade of a couple of different really cool Wipeout games. So just showing you here what this can look like. I'm gonna hide these options, get the full screen experience. My audio's up. Cool, great. So in case you don't believe, one to one, that's the latency. It exists and that's because we're doing, there's two steps of latency here. I'll lower the audio. Steps here are Bluetooth to iPad, iPad to router, and then router directly ethernet plugged in to PS4 Pro. I highly recommend ethernet. Before I did ethernet, it was really bad and now it's pretty great. So let's try some kind of event and see if I can do this and not suck. All right, I'm gonna go with this dude, Van Uber. Give you that full view. Controller here again for proof. It's 2019, this stuff just works. Again, there's a visual degradation, but it's nothing like what it used to be like on PS Vita Remote Play, for example. Um, and I believe that most of the chokeholds that I have are my Xfinity network, which has some really, really bad upload speeds because Xfinity is a terrible company and a monopoly. Come at me, Xfinity, if you want to upgrade my internet, by all means. I'm not giving you another dime, though. All right. 
So that was the wrong button, and that's my bad. Um, yeah, so here you can see, there's a, if you look really close, and it might not come through on the video, there's some artifacting, but the latency is really low, and it's totally playable, and any messing up you see of the driving here is because I'm not doing great right now in this level, but not because the iPad isn't a really cool way to play this in a portable way if you want to. Anyway, that's PS4 Remote Play. So Steam Remote Play has recently been updated to be supported on iOS again, which is awesome. So basically, I've got my desktop right here, and this is a weird use case because obviously I'm right next to it, but if I'm in bed and I just want to play one of my Steam games that's controller compatible, I want to make sure Steam's running. And once I've confirmed that it's all up and ready to go, we'll move on to the iPad and show you how smooth that experience is in real time. All right, so Steam's up, good to go there. Steam Link, everything's already confirmed, good connection, start playing. I have it on um, visual settings as my primary priority. So here you go. Now we're gonna see a one-to-one -one connection between the device here and my PC. I'm gonna turn my screen off. And now I should be fully iPad only. Red Faction Grill is a game I keep almost buying on Switch because I love playing things portably and I also love playing them on my TV. With this configuration, I have the best of all worlds. I can play my games on my PC, on my monitor, I can play them portably here on the iPad, and I can play them connected to my TV as well. Again, DualShock 4, it's going to show the button inputs for uh, an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller, but it all correlates and it's all good. The only game I found where using the DualShock instead of an Xbox controller kind of sucked was Forza Horizon 4, because I actually really like how the triggers work. Um, in Forza. So here we go. Here's an example of latency and quality. Latency on this is really acceptable. Again, home network play at this point, in my opinion, is good to go. It's ready to go, even with my setup, which is a pretty low end Xfinity, like 60 up, or sorry, 60 down, 1.5 up. In home streaming, you don't have to worry about that up threshold because you're just on an ad hoc network. And it is smooth and pretty. And yeah. I'm pretty early in the game. I haven't really done a lot, but here I'll show you some latency. So trigger, break. It's not nothing. Here's start menu, resume. I think that's a better example because some of these just have slower animations. But yeah, this is superbly playable. And if you wanted lower latency, you could choose speed over beauty or whatever. That's totally your choice. Um, Steam and PlayStation streaming really bring a totally new way of gaming to the iPad with the introduction of iPad OS and the DualShock support as well as Bluetooth Xbox controller support. I don't have a Bluetooth Xbox controller or I would totally use that for PC stuff. But yeah, this is something I can imagine doing a lot. Like end of day, I don't wanna be sitting at my desk after sitting at my desk at work and maybe I'm tired of looking at a TV but I wanna wind down in bed. And instead of you know putting away my screens and making sure my eyes rest, I'm gonna play some Red Faction Gorilla on my iPad in bed. And uh, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, one thing I'm actually noticing, this game is new enough that we are actually seeing PlayStation icons, so shout out to the devs of this game for supporting DualShock 4 iconography because that makes things way less confusing. All right, cool. So yeah, that is streaming of Steam games. Look, I do understand why people get a little annoyed with Apple's marketing because a direct one-to-one -one comparison between a laptop and an iPad is always going to be a strange comparison. The iPad is a different beast. It does things differently, and it's something that you have to learn. But once you do, I find that I would way rather have this thin device that I can augment with accessories when I need to expand its abilities, but can always use its primary functions, than I would something like a Windows tablet, or a MacBook, or any other laptop. Now that you can stream games using a DualShock, now that more advanced applications are coming out, like LumaFusion's editing suite, like the various DAW software for making music that's available using Audio Unit 3 plugins, like my OPZ synthesizer, I'll show in a different video, connecting via Bluetooth to control these audio units. The amount of stuff you can do as a creative person with this device is amazing. If all you do is word processing and you're just entering in text all the time and you need to have that machine in your lap while you're entering text, Obviously, iPad Pro, probably not the best device for you. But I think the iPad Pro gets knocked by a lot of writers and tech reviewers because all they do is write and review tech. Your average creative person, your average 
user of tech is mostly consuming, and when they're creating, it's not always with a keyboard. If you want a keyboard and mouse, you've got it. As I showed at the beginning of the video now, you can plug into a screen. I'm gonna edit this entire video in LumaFusion. I'll probably even take a quick break in the middle of the process to show you how that's going and what it looks like. This thing is amazing and allows you to move your workflow with the same device wherever you go. I would really like to see external monitor support really expanded. I would like to see mouse support moved outside of just the accessibility options, where again, it's essential for folks who need it but I would like to see it expanded as a real UI paradigm for the next versions of iPad OS, where they understand that this machine can be so many things if we support it. We're already seeing the groundwork of that now, and I am so excited for what the future of this device is. So I would say at this point, we're probably gonna see a new generation of these devices within the next five months for sure. There's usually an October event for iPads like this, maybe even sooner this year. So I would say don't buy one yet unless you're desperate for some of these features now. Um, if you do, make sure you get it on a sale. But I'm really excited to see what they do with the next gen. And as always with technology, next gen means cheaper prices for the current one, which is a beast and I think is gonna last at least three or four, maybe even five years. Or a new piece of technology that might be even cooler. I won't be upgrading because again, my credit problem is ridiculous. But the future of iPad is amazing and as much as I don't really use Apple stuff anymore um, outside of my iPad, this device is best in class. There's nothing else like it and I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching and taking that time. Feel free to comment if there's anything else you'd like to see me do with the iPad, especially music stuff. I'm happy to deep dive into some of the stuff I've learned. Some channels I highly recommend for music stuff with the iPad are the Sound Test Room and Jakob Hack, as well as Coco. Um, those three really dive into what you can do with an iPad and are where I learned a lot of what I know. Anyway, cool. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Catch you later.